Hello my little butterflies and this video is going to be my November TBR. So for my TBR for this month, just like I did last year, November is Alzheimer's Awareness Month and Native American Heritage Month. So I am going to be reading Alzheimer's, you know, awareness books. Well, books that include Alzheimer's and also books about Native Americans or books that are written by Native Americans. And that's I'm not only reading books from them because the book I'm currently one of the books that I'm currently reading isn't has nothing to do with either one of those topics. But you know, most of the books that I'm reading this month is going to be dedicated to that. So first of all, what I'm currently reading is two books actually. What that I'm about to start reading. Um, I just finished um, American Vampire Volume Two tonight, and I finished Illuminate like a like two days ago. So the book that I'm going to be starting tonight, that I'm also buddy reading this month with a couple people from my book club on Goodreads, is 11:22:63 by Stephen King. I haven't started it yet, but I'm going to start it when I'm done. I'm going to start it tonight. We're going to read six chapters. Well, discuss six chapters a week. You know, if you read more, then that's fine. But it's me and two other people that we're doing this buddy read. This is like my first buddy read of the year. I'm so late to the game, and y'all know I love buddy reads. This is going to be my second Buddy Read that I've done. But Buddy Reads are so much fun. It's so much fun to discuss while you're reading. And with a thick book like this, I wanted to discuss it with other people while I read it. And it's going to keep me on track and not like, okay, I don't want to read this anymore because it's long. So, wish me the best of luck with this book. And if y'all don't know, this book is about this um, college, no, this GED teacher. And he finds out that the owner of this diner in his town has like a portal in his diner that goes back to the past. And they are trying to prevent the assassination of JFK. And I, I'm, I don't know if the whole book is going to be them preventing it or if they prevent it. And then what if they prevented it? What would have happened? I'm not sure. But I know that much. That's the main point of the book. And I'm like excited to read this book. I wish I could have got the hardcover. But the hardcover is like $27. And y'all know I'm not spending $27 on one book. I can see if it was two, three books. Not one book. And I really, really wanted the hardcover. But I settled the $10 and got the paper back. Like a normal person. Then the next book that I'm about to start and I'm probably going to finish in one sitting is a collection of poetry and it's Native American related and it's Native American songs and poems an anthology by Brian Swan. It's just a collection of poetry. I think it's like a hundred and something between a hundred and two hundred pages so I'm pretty sure I'll finish that you know in one day or so and hopefully I really enjoy it. I think last year the it wasn't a collection of poetry but it was kind of like an anthology um not your princess i think is the name of it but it was from a bunch of different native american authors it was this book with different formats all throughout the book we had poetry we had biographies we had um just life stories from all different kinds of native americans living in all different walks of life and i just i really enjoyed it so hopefully i really enjoy this too okay so with the rest of my tbr all together my tbr is 10 books that's including the two books that i said i'm currently reading um, I don't know if I'm going to read them all because they're not long books, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to read all 10 if I do, uh, you know, woohoo for me, pat on my back. If I do, that'll be great. But if not, I'm not going to be mad at myself because I'm pretty sure I won't read all 10 books. So one of the books that's on, the first book that's on my list that was, I think was on my wish, no, my wish list, <laughs> that I think was on my TBR last year is Still Alice by Lisa Genova. This is an Alzheimer's book. And it's about this 50 year old married woman with three grown kids and she starts to notice her forgetfulness and realizes that she is diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's and it's about her, how she's literally losing her mind because you know with Alzheimer's your brain is degenerating. So you're literally losing your mind and it's about her going through that experience and I'm just, I'm ready for it. Um, last year I read, I'm going to put it up here, I can't remember it right now, oh, oh An Absent Mind. That was so emotional when I read that. I was just like, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like somebody was just like squeezing my heart. It was such an emotional read. I recommend that if you guys are looking for Alzheimer's books. Because it's, it's hard to find some Alzheimer's book out there. And it is an adult. It's not really YA. It's not really YA Alzheimer's book out there. I know why, but I don't know why. Because I guess it's kind of hard to write uh, as a YA author. It's hard to write about Alzheimer's from a young person's, you know, perspective. But it would be nice to get some out there where, you know, you're, because there are teenagers that watch their grandparents that they're close with go through it. So it would be nice to get a book about that 
I guess. But I understand why there aren't many books out there like that. The next book that's on my list is Black Indians, A Hidden Heritage by William Lauren Cat. I hope that's how you say your last name. But it's literally about how a lot of black people back in the day would claim that they were mixed with Native Americans so they wouldn't have to say that they were mixed with white people. That you know like they had a, a grandma, a great grandma or something that got raped by a white person. They would literally say well I was part of the Native American, I, I was half Native American. And it's about I think how a lot of Native Americans took in a lot of slaves to their tribes and protected them and took care of them. And how a lot of you know Native Americans and black people you know got together and procreated. <laughs> So, um, I think that's, I don't think I explained that good enough, but that's basically what it's about. And I just thought it was interesting. I want to say I'm going to read this, but I haven't bought it yet. And I'm going to buy this book and another book that's on my wishlist at the same time. It's just sitting in my cart on Amazon. I'm going to get it. I just don't know if by the time I get it, what I still have time to read it this month. But it's definitely something that I want to read. The next book that's on my list actually came out this year. I think it came out in June. It's called There There by Tommy Orange. And this book I'm checking out digitally, not through Hoopa, but through Overdrive, I think is the name of it. That's another um, free library app that a lot of people use as well. And it's a Native American voice and it's basically following a group of Native Americans from, you know, different walks in their life, going back to their roots. And how each, I think it's like five or six of them, and it's about how each one is living their life differently. How one might be very proud of their Native American culture and heritage and the other might not be and doesn't want to carry on the fact that they're Native American and it's following them actually going back to where they came from and just how their lives are going with their culture. The next book on my list is Hearts Unbroken by Cynthia Latish Smith which is the book that I'm going to buy with Black Indians um, whenever I order it but this book is also a Native, Amer it's a Native American book <clears throat> and it's a, it's a YA book and I think this one came out this year too. Yeah, this one just came out in October. So this one just came out last month. So it's a newly released book that was not on my radar when I first uh, made my uh, most anticipated releases, which I've done horrible with reading those books on that list. But this is the book that I'm, I'm very excited that I actually found out about it. Because it is about this young teen girl, Native American girl, who is navigating high school. It's her senior year. She's going through high school, dealing with all the negativity just not based on her being Native American, but just her life, period. She ends up breaking with her boyfriend that disrespects and pretty much has like racial slurs to other Native Americans in front of her. She breaks up with him. Then um, there's this big controversy going on with this with the theater play. Uh, I think they're doing The Wizard of Oz and they cast it, you know, Native Americans in The Wizard of Oz. And I think there's a, like a lot of the white people at the school didn't like it. So they're like protesting the play and everything or whatever. Well, parents anyway are protesting the play and then she, I think she's up dating someone that's not Native American and you have to deal with her going through dating wild Native, I think is how they put it. So, I, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff going on and I like that it's young adult because, and then it's a new young, it's not like an older book, it's a new young adult Native American book. Because a lot of times, these, a lot of books these days don't follow the Native culture. It's mostly everything else. It's, you don't find too many Native books that's, you know, new and relevant. So I like that it's following a, a young girl in YA because I know a lot of people are YA readers and her going through all of this all of this drama in high school that's surrounding her being a Native American and how people have racism and you know views toward her because she's Native. So I'm excited to read it and the cover is beautiful. So I can't wait to get that on my shelf because it's a very beautiful book. Then the next book on my list is a book that I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have heard about and it's called We Are Ants by Sean David Hutchison. I've, I found out about this through book too so I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard about it or noticed the cover because a lot of times I can't remember hearing about the book but I could be like that looks familiar I've seen that book and I'm pretty sure this has something in it about Alzheimer's if I remember hearing it correctly. Somebody in this book has Alzheimer's related to the main character or something like that. So it's basically about this boy that his, basically most of his whole life he's been abducted by aliens and they give him an ultimatum to make where the world can end, the world will end in 144 days and all he has to do to stop it is to press this red button but he's not sure he wants to do it because he feels like his, his life hasn't been great. He hasn't had the best life anyway so do I really want to save a world where my life has been shit? Or do I just want to kill it because my life's been shit? Then the next book that's on my list is a book that I started to read last year, but I didn't finish. I stopped reading it to read something else. And it's called A Day to Remember, a novel of Alzheimer's by Gretchen Nielsen Izaki. 
Orizaki. I don't know how you pronounce her last name. I felt the same way last year because I couldn't pronounce her name. But it's an Alzheimer's awareness novel. I started, I think I read the first six or seven chapters before I put it down to read other stuff and I just, I never went back to it. I didn't mean to DNF it, but I kind of forgot about it. And it follows three generations of women actually. The day to remember, it's the younger gen, I can't remember her name, but this girl, she's getting married and her grandmother is going through Alzheimer's. So we get to see things from the daughter's point of view, the mother, and then the grandmother who's actually going through the Alzheimer's. And it's like you kind of get to go through flashbacks, the exact same flashback from all three of their point of views. And I just, I love, I liked it. And it's not that I didn't start reading because I got bored. I just, I don't know, I put it down to read something else. I just never went back to it. So it's not like it was a bad book. I, I was enjoying it so far, but I just, I don't remember why I stopped reading it. And I did kind of forget about it. And I was like, well, I'll just read it again, you know, in November. But it, it, I like seeing it from three different perspectives. I like the concept of going through the same flashback three times from three different perspectives. Because it's like, you get to see the whole picture. You get to see it from the daughter's point of view, depending on how old she is. I think her started, she started to notice stuff about her grandmother forgetting when I think she was like nine. Because her grandmother used to babysit her after school. So you get to see a flashback from her perspective. Then you get to see the same incident from her mother's perspective. And then the same incident from the grandmother's perspective. So you get to see inside of all of their heads and get to really experience the situation. And I enjoyed that. So hopefully, I, I, hopefully, I am going to read it because I already started reading this before. So this is a definite read. This is probably going to be the next read I read after I read my um, collection of poetry that I'm reading right now. So... I'm going to get through that this year since I didn't last year. And then I'm going to read Pocahontas by Joseph Bruchak. Now I read a Pocahontas book last year. I did not like it. I don't have a problem with truth. With truth, it was nonfiction. It's just how it was done, and I, it was terrible. Which is done. It, it, it seems like your notes that you write when you're thinking of writing a book before you put it together, but it just seemed like it was just the notes, and then put a cover on it and published it that's what it read like and it was just terrible so hopefully this one is better it is not it's just following like the real Pocahontas not Disney the real story and I'm okay with that as long as you know it's put together good so hopefully it's just gonna be great if I have the book up here I just don't feel like getting it so hopefully it works out and I enjoy it and don't feel like I did last year because last year it really hurt my reading mood and I think that's why I started reading day to remember it might have been because I know that it hurt my reading experience so I didn't even feel like reading anymore after that it was a total disappointment and then the last book that's on my list is beyond the western sun the first book in the Whisper, um, the Whisper Legacy by Christina Circelli. And I think this is on my wishlist last year too because it's on my Kindle. And I think this is one of the books that I got for free. It's a Native American book. And I want to say, let me see, because I'm pretty sure, I think it's about Shifter. Oh no, it's better than the Shifter. Oh my god. Okay, so this is, I don't know why I thought this was about Shifters. I have no idea why I thought this was about Shifters. But uh, I'm just going to read this in God, okay, so I'm just going to read this in Nazis because this sounds better than the Shifters. Okay, so, and I think this is YA. Is it YA? I'm pretty sure it's YA. It's fa no, it's not. No, it's not. It's a fantasy novel, though. So, the synopsis is when seven-year-old Cole Davea vanishes beneath raging rapids in the Smoky Mountains, Ian Davea's refusal to accept his son's fate leads him to a partnership with Whisper, a young Cherokee apprentice, for a terrifying journey into the heart of Native American lore. A landmark indicating the divide between the land and dead, the Western Sun signifies Whisper and Ian's entry into death into a world that will force them to confront their deepest fears, darkest demons, and most bitter prejudices, and will requ require them to have the utmost courage to carry on if they are to save the life of the captive young child in the land of the dead. From the watchman who guards the bridge of the dead, to the giant inchworm that feeds on women, to the deceitful mole who dwells beneath the earth, Ian and Whisper must defeat and outwit all of their past. Their most treacherous enemy, however, waits at the fire tower at the Raven Ear, a ferocious tyrant that rules over the land, has set in motion a plan to destroy the living world. Does Whisper's secret hold the key to whether the two live or die? As the army of the dead marches closer to the western sun and Whisper leads them deeper into the land of the dead, Ian will need courage, humility, and most importantly, his son in order to save both worlds. I love American, like Native American folklore. like reading their fantasies and like just reading their myths i love it because it's always so like dramatic 
but at the same time they're so deep when you like sit and and think about what each thing is representing and it's just it's not a lot of the times their folklore is it's not literal when you but when you look deeper into what each each thing or each item whatever it is or person animal is symbolizing it is so deep like i love native american folklore i'm going to enjoy this book i'm definitely going to enjoy this book and it just got pushed up to the top of my list because it sounds freaking amazing but anywho that is the 10 books that is on my november tbr thank you guys for watching what are you guys planning on reading this month in november um i would like to know comment below don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time bye F-I-N-D-S R-I-E-N-D-S That's how you f***